All right, let's talk about the Detroit Lions and San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. You know, 49ers uh, have gotten used to playing in this game. The Lions are definitely going to have to get used to it. And we're going to talk today about uh, the Lions offense against the 49ers defense, which it should be good on good right here. I mean, if you look at where they rank in each specific positional category, according to PFF, it's top 10 across the board. The worst you see is 10th best um, for the Lions, 6th best passing. And again, that's just pure passing for Jared Goff. That's not factoring in rushing. PFF has him graded as 11th best overall, but still very good and a very good thrower, which, you know, if we're talking about a passing game, that's where he can really thrive. And with the third best receiving core, this is a unit that has lit up opposing coverage units, but San Francisco's is no easy one to light up. They have been third best at coverage this season. Pass block versus pass rush. Again, it is great on great third best pass rush, but the Detroit Lions have done a very good job pass blocking, and usually if it's great on great when it comes to pass rush versus pass blocking, usually that means you don't get a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, the Lions, they do a great job at limiting pressure, and so even though, you know, uh, contrary to popular belief, a lot of people talked about the 49ers being like a bad pass rushing unit. No, they're very good. It's a lot of Nick Bosa, but Nick Bosa is amazing. And they do a good job from the uh, interior as well. Um, so, you know, a lot of good stuff by that. But again, against Detroit, not sure how much it's going to matter. And again, for the 49ers, really good run defense. 10th best in football. You'll definitely take that. But against the second be- best run blocking unit, uh, which still has the ninth best rushing so far this season. I mean, definitely really good. And also, it's worth mentioning, if you look at their pass frequency over expected real quick, uh, you know, the top column there, or top row, excuse me, uh, it's, you know, minus 4%, meaning they run the ball 4% more than average. That means they are a very run-heavy team. 4% is actually a good amount. Uh, so, definitely, uh, they, they run the ball a lot. They're going to be running in this game, and that could be where this game is potentially won or lost. Going over to a play like this, again, I mentioned... A lot of good matchups for the Detroit Lions in this game when it comes to rushing. But one guy that I don't care who you have on is still a tough guy to deal with is going to be Nick Bosa. And again, in the pass blocking game, you can kind of work with it. Uh, Detroit has good tackles. And if you have to, you know, help one of them out just to make sure you take away the beast that is Nick Bosa, okay, go ahead and do that. In the run blocking game, though, you're going to have specific bad matchups, right? You're going to have tight ends blocking him at times. You're going to have maybe a guard pull over and block him just because that's how the running game works. You can't just have, you know, Panay Sewell block him one-on-one every time. And watch his get off on this play against Green Bay. Look at how immediately he gets through. You know, a tight end does try to, you know, make a play. But again, I don't, I don't care what tight end is in on that play. I don't care if it's George Kittle trying to block you're not blocking that move. You're just not. So, like, that's the, the you know, again, the guy you're going up against here. That being said, for Detroit, even if they end up with some injuries, again, I don't know how healthy Frank Ragnow is. I know they had a, a guard go down as well. Still got Taylor Decker. We still got Panay Sewell. Uh, you know, they're going to be really good. Uh, I think it still favors Detroit, but you do have to worry about 97 for San Francisco. As for the passing game, though, you know, something like this, it's a zone coverage play, and and this is a lot of what Detroit is going to want to do to San Francisco, which is, you know, get guys out of position, throw over the middle. That's what they have done all year, and they've had success with it. It's also what Green Bay has done all year, which is why I'm using footage from this playoff game. Watch as when, uh, you know, I almost called him Rogers. when Jordan Love takes the snap and runs the play action, you see how the linebackers are playing this. They're staying pretty far deep, but, you know, Tampa Bay in the divisional round, I thought was really making an effort to get as far deep as possible, whereas I think San Francisco does a good job of staying deep enough, but maybe not over committing. What did Jared Goff do in that playoff game? Well, he took a lot of checkdowns. He was not afraid to say, hey, if, you know, if the linebackers are going to go further deep, I'll just throw it on underneath. No, no big deal. That's what Goff does a great job of, and you know, he's always been really good at that, but especially in Detroit, has really t- uh, you know stepped up his game in terms of just maximize the play, even if that means throw a check down. That's what Jordan Love is going to end up doing on this play, and again, I mean, those are really good tackling linebackers, right? Dre Greenlaw, Fred Warner, you're not going to get a ton of separation, ton of space there, and not going to make a lot of guys miss. That being said, you know, they have guys who can make guys miss. So again, it's great on great. But 
again, I think San Francisco, they would take that over getting burned down the field. Also, this chart is always something that I'm fascinated by when we talk about uh, just, you know, the defense in general and, you know, how matchups work. I want to see, okay, how does a certain receiving core do versus man versus zone, right? Man or zone, what are they better at? The way this chart is, is there's technically four different things we're talking about. It's yards per route ran versus man, uh, PFF grade versus man, yards per route ran versus zone, and then PFF grade versus zone. The 49ers, typically, they like to play zone coverage on first and second down, and then they'll play man on third down. That's traditionally what they do. Listen, will they mix things up every now and then? Of course. No team does this. You know, Obviously, you're not going to do the exact same thing every single time because then other teams can catch on, but that's usually what they do. So for zone, I mean, to me, the two guys you have to really look out for are Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta. Don't get me wrong. Jameer Gibbs in the passing game, Josh Reynolds, Jamison Williams, and if you know, Kaif Raymond is healthy, him as well. Those are guys you have to pay attention to. They have so many different weapons. But to me, Laporta and St. Brown are the two guys for Detroit. And you see that against zone, they have been awesome this season. I mean, yards per route ran for Amara St. Brown, uh, you know, 2.84, which is just absurd, and an over 90 PFF grade. Uh, and Laporta is over two uh, yards per route ran as well with an 83.4 PFF grade. Every player on this list practically is better uh, when, they're in, when they're going up against zone, then when they're going up against man coverage. The only guy who has higher yards per route ran against man coverage is Josh Reynolds, and he still has a lower PFF grade, and it's not that much higher uh, in man. So, and again, it's kind of the thing where who would you rather be giving a benefit to, Amon Ross St. Brown or Josh Reynolds? With all due respect to Josh Reynolds, he's not Amon Ross St. Brown. So I do think the zone situations will be interesting, and I do think that Detroit can still find ways to get guys open in zone, but San Francisco likes to play it. But if I'm the Niners here, I don't go into this game saying, well, this is what we do. Let's just do it. If you have to drop back and play, man, don't be afraid to do it, I think. that That's how I would uh, view things. Of course, you're leaving yourself open in the running game, and that's what makes the Lions offense so deadly, is there really is no perfect strategy to play because their running game is so effective. And going over here, again, I'm, I'm using all uh, 49ers uh, footage here. If you're a Lions fan who's upset about that, uh, the next video I make about the uh, Lions uh, defense and the 49ers offense, I'm going to use all Lions defensive footage, just how I felt like it made most sense to uh, explain the you know points I have on this video. But while San Francisco has done a good job at stopping the run, I thought there's the ability to try to get these outside runs. Like I, I thought uh, Green Bay hit on a couple this year. Watch as you're going to see, uh, you know, flips it back to Aaron Jones, who's able to run forward. He picks up a first down right there. So maybe some, some ability to do that. And I do think the running game is going to be key for Detroit. But if you know me and how I view football in general, uh, you know, I'm okay with getting beat in the run game. You can't go full Brandon Staley or anything like that, but you'd rather keep yourself protected in the passing game than the running game. But definitely you can get guys out of position in the passing game with a good running game. And that's what I think Detroit is going to try and do. So final predictions time. Uh, Detroit season offensive points per drive is 2.4. Five, whereas the San Francisco defensive points per drive is 1.73. These are great numbers across the board. Both of these are fantastic numbers. So what do I think is going to happen? Who do I think is going to win out? Well, I do think the Niners are a really good defense. I think they will be able to cover up more of these zone coverage plays than the Lions are usually used to seeing. And again, you know, I didn't bring up turnovers here. Hey, zone coverage makes it easier to get turnovers. Maybe you can get lucky on a you know pass or two. It seems like Goff will give you maybe one or two a game. You know, each of the playoff games, he's kind of given the defense one play, but uh, the defense didn't capitalize on either. But really, I still trust the Lions to be able to scheme stuff up and get guys open in zone coverage, and I trust them to run the ball. Well, I think third downs is going to be a big benefit to San Francisco, and that's why I don't think Detroit is going to have their 2.45 they're used to. I am still leaning pretty heavily towards Detroit's favor here uh, in terms of offense versus defense. I am going to predict a 2.3 points per drive game. That's how I think this game is going to go. But yeah, those are my thoughts on all of this. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.